Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. The real villains in our first story are the franchise owners. They employed a lazy person and allowed her to hurt their staff. Instead of getting rid of the incompetent person, they kept her on so she could destroy a single store instead of a whole district. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. Horrible district manager suggests I seek employment elsewhere after I call her out on her bullcrap. I managed a small franchise-owned beauty salon. It was my first management role I've ever taken on. I built the salon up after a low period. I was well respected by my staff because I was an empathetic listener and understood the needs of my staff. District manager was anything but that. She was originally hired on as a manager of a new location in our district that was set to open a month after her original hire date. She somehow convinced our franchise owners that she'd be a perfect fit for the role of district manager and was promoted quickly. At first, I did not see my district manager all that much. Remember that new location that was opening up? Well, she'd tell me that she was over at that location getting things in order to be ready by the opening date. I took her word for it and managed to run my location just fine without her guidance, even though I was new to management myself. After that location was good to go, she would promise me that she would spend a day with me at my location, and when that day would come around, I would get the, oh, something came up at another location text from her. I was starting to get a little suspicious. In the meantime, a new manager was hired on at another location in our district. This woman became my mentor as she has years of experience in the industry. District manager, as part of her job duties, was supposed to train this new manager on her role. District manager gave this woman the runaround too. Oh, I'll be here today, and then later a text message of something came up at another location. Little did district manager know that us location managers were talking to one another and quickly realized that this woman is sitting at home while collecting a paycheck. Our franchise owners, too, quickly began to realize what this horrible district manager was doing. However, they were reluctant to fire her because they had no solid evidence of what she was doing. District manager caught on that her job was on the line and really started to throw her weight around. She fired multiple employees at all locations who had no previous write-ups. These particular employees were ones who saw her bullcrap and weren't afraid to stand up for themselves. She started enforcing purposeless tasks onto us managers. Soon enough, turnover was high at each location. Even some long-term employees left after she started to show up more. Now for the malicious compliance. Eventually, I had enough of putting up with her crap, and on a particularly rough day, I called her out on her bullcrap. I went ahead and called the franchisers and told them everything of what she was doing. A few days later, district manager pulls me aside and tells me that she suggests I find another job elsewhere and that she could pull some strings. Well, I did exactly just that and found a new job, without her help, of course. I gave my franchisers my notice, and on my very last day, horrible district manager was demoted to my former position and was given a huge pay cut. And our second story. Entitled mom throws tantrum because I won't give her an employee's phone number. Backstory. This happened many years ago when I was manager at a popular sandwich shop. Because it was considered a starter job, a lot of our employees were high school age students. Most were great employees, students looking to get some work experience slash money before going off to college. A few of them were not so great. One such worker was a guy I'm going to call Mark. Mark was a problem from day one. He clearly didn't like working. If you told him to do something, he would find any excuse not to do it or avoid it altogether. He would talk smack to customers, and we often just put him on kitchen duty, which he was terrible at. He constantly showed up late or didn't show up at all. He lasted about a month before I finally had to let him go. The story. This happened about six months after Mark stopped working for us. It was a typical weekday. I was working alone. It was a very slow shop and had a line of about three people. Enter the entitled mother. EM marched straight up to the till, bypassing the line. I need to speak to the manager. Me? addressing her from the other end of the counter where I'm still making a sub for the current customer. I'm the manager, ma'am. I'm happy to help you in a second if you don't mind waiting. 
p.m. This is an emergency. I need help now. I excuse myself from the current customer and approach her. What's wrong, ma'am? EM. Do you have an employee named Mark working here? Me. We used to. He's no longer with us. EM. I need his phone number right now. Note. Due to company policy at my work, we're not allowed to give away any personal slash private information of our employees to non-family members, excepting for true emergencies. Me. Are you family? EM. No. Me. Why do you need it? What kind of emergency is it? EM goes into a long, rapid story about how her son and Mark are best friends. She says that Mark is a bad influence. He's gotten her son in trouble in the past, and she tries to keep them apart. Apparently, her son didn't come back from school yesterday. He's still missing and not answering his phone. She says she's sure he's with Mark getting into trouble again. She wants Mark's phone number to call and see if her son is with him. I politely tell her that I'm sure this is a very frustrating experience, but due to company policy, I cannot give away an employee's private information. I recommend calling the local police department and seeing if they can help. I offer to call them with her. I would have happily given Mark's number to a police officer if they deemed it necessary. EM throws a huge fit. I don't want to call the police. Mark has gotten my son arrested before. If I call the police, they'll just arrest him when they find him. I just want to call Mark to see if my son is with him and to make him tell my son to come home. I apologize, as that's the best thing I can think of. EM. Get me your manager. Me. I am the manager, ma'am. EM. Get me the owner, then. Me. He's on vacation on the other side of the world. I'm not to call him unless it's an emergency. EM. This is an emergency. Me. Not by his standards. How about I take your phone number and text it to him? He can call you when he wakes up. EM starts a string of profanity but scribbled her number down on a napkin. While I'm texting it to my boss, she begins loudly whining to the other customers, who've been patiently waiting this whole time, I can't believe they won't give me his phone number. This is an emergency. My son is missing. Last time he went out with Mark, they got caught graffitiing a car and were arrested. I know that kid is with my son. Who knows what trouble he's getting him into? Can you believe she won't give me his number? Me. I've texted my boss your number and given him an update on the situation. If he gives me permission to pass on Mark's number, may I text it to you? EM. Why can't you give it to me now? Me. As I said, we're not allowed to give out employees. EM. He's not an employee. You said it yourself. He hasn't been with you for a while. Me. We simply do not give out private information of our employees, current or former. EM starts another tantrum. This time, she actually pushes our cookie display onto the ground. She throws a bag of potato chips at me while demanding the phone number. She runs up to the other customers in line and starts asking them to help get the phone number from me. She starts pleading with them for sympathy. I decided this has gone too far and started calling the police. EM hears me on the phone with the police and says, oh yeah? Well, I'm going to call the police on you. Starts fake dialing her phone. Hello, police? Yes, my son has been kidnapped. I'm at a store and this woman won't give me the phone number of his kidnapper. She proceeds to walk out and away from the store while placing this phone call. I go back to helping my customers. I apologize profusely to them. Most of them thought it was pretty funny. A very confused police officer showed up about five minutes later. I told him the story and gave him her phone number and her photo from our security camera. Another customer told the officer which direction she'd walked away. He wrote down the information and said he'd follow up if he needed to contact Mark. My boss responded around midnight, and I updated him on what had happened. He was glad I hadn't given out any personal information. He was sure she was a crazy lady. I never did hear back from that lady or the officer, but it sure made for an interesting experience. And our last story. She must have thought it was a good idea at the time. So I delivered home heating oil for my dad for many years. We did not do furnace or boiler work. We were not licensed to do furnace or boiler work. If you ran so low on fuel your pilot light went out, that was on you to get it relit. Our policy was if you didn't have an account set up, you paid in cash upon delivery. If you had a fuel voucher, you needed to tell us before delivery because we had to verify the voucher with the issuing agency, and this was clearly stated on the voucher itself and clearly stated when the order was placed. 
I do a delivery to a first timer and go in to get payment expecting cash or a check. Get hit with, you aren't going to relight my furnace? After a long explanation on my part and much haranguing on their part, they try to play the I know the owner card and tell me they're going to have me fired. Then I shifted back to payment and they handed me the voucher. I told them I can't take the voucher because it's not been verified and I needed cash or a check. This started the I know the owner again and they were going to have me fired before I get back to the shop. Yeah, I really think that'll happen, lady. Now, my father went by his middle name professionally, but anyone who knew him knew his actual first name, so I asked, what's the owner's name? They responded with his middle name. I asked, are you sure? And they doubled down on how they knew him for years and knew his family. I then asked, what are his kids' names? That stopped them in their tracks. I showed her my dad's name on the bill and pointed out the last name. I then showed her my ID and said, see, the last names match. I need cash or a check. They tell me they only have the voucher. I tell them I have to follow the agency's protocol for vouchers and it needs to be approved before delivery or they won't pay the voucher and we're not giving them the fuel oil. We now have two options. They pay me in cash or check. I call the police for theft of service. Your choice. They came up with the cash. I got the you are a horrible company in person spiel as I was leaving and the I'm never going to use you again spiel too. Now, there are only three companies that do home fuel in that community. I red flagged the name and address in our book and called the other two companies to find out they've already been flagged as no deliver in their books for the same reason. A voucher doesn't have much value if your A-hat behavior has resulted in no one delivering you fuel. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.